Hey what's up guys? Today I'll show you a horror film, The Skeleton Key. Spoiler ahead, watch out and take care. The movie begins with a 25-year-old good-hearted nurse named Caroline, who is reading a story to her patient at a nursing hospital. As her voice becomes a symphony of hope, Caroline slowly witnesses the death and demise of her patient. After continuously seeing how the hospital treats its patients as a cargo, this leads her to realize a decision to quit her job. With all the stressors and burdens from her previous work, she then notices a job advertisement in a newspaper, thinking that this is an opportunity. Hesitant at first, she consults her friend Jill in addressing the post as a new beginning. Caroline finally discerns that she is ready to take a full-time hospice caregiver position at a remote plantation mansion in Terrebonne Parish. There, she will receive a monthly salary of $1,000. One day, she decides to visit the said location and arrives at the mansion. Only the whispering winds surround the location, and only the twittering birds rule the creepy atmosphere. A few seconds later, the family lawyer named Luke welcomes Caroline and introduces the woman in the house. She then meets Mrs. Devereaux taking care of her paralyzed husband, Mr. Devereaux, who cannot talk, and is currently bedridden due to a stroke. At the very first time they meet, Mrs. Devereaux shows an unwelcoming response and behavior towards Caroline, because she was born in New Jersey, not in New Orleans. She even insists that the new applicant will not understand the house, and will be just like the other previous caregivers. Knowing that they cannot have a good relationship with each other, Caroline almost refuses the job. However, the family lawyer convinces her to accept the position, even though the recent nurses were fired or quit their job. Without any delay, Caroline finally grabs the offer, and immediately packs her belongings with the help of her good friend Jill. On her way back to the estate of the elderly couple, her car runs out of gas. While she is looking for a solution to her problem, she stops at a gasoline station. And she observes a line of brick dust in the front door. In addition, residents appear to be reserved and are eerie. An unknown strange man suddenly appears, and collects the payment for the gasoline. Meanwhile, Caroline arrives at the mansion, and begins unpacking her things. As she tries to familiarize the location, she recognizes frame marks of mirrors in some areas of the wall. Later, she goes to Mr. Devereaux's bedroom to introduce herself, until the paralyzed man tightly grabs her wrist with a deathly grip and strange expression. The commotion ends when Mrs. Devereaux enters the room, to give some medications and remedies for Mr. Devereaux. Afterward, Mrs. Devereaux starts to elaborate all the tasks of Caroline to Mr. Devereaux as her full-time caregiver. Curious as she is, Caroline asks her about the history of their house. Mrs. Devereaux explains that they bought the house in 1962 from Martin and Grace, who are siblings. While Caroline is listening to the house's history, she finds a picture of two adults and two kids. She distinguishes a note at the back of the photo, which states, Papa Justify and Mama Cecile. Lastly, Mrs. Devereaux warns her about the attic, and emphasizes a thing that could open 30 doors in the mansion, and this thing is known as the skeleton key. The following day, Mrs. Devereaux cultivates and fixes her plants in the garden, while Caroline is guiding Mr. Devereaux in a wheelchair. Then, the old woman asks her to get some seeds from the attic. While searching the seeds and entering the room, Caroline hears a disturbing noise that catches her attention, and pushes her to search for it. She finds a rattling door behind the fireplace, and out of curiosity, she attempts to open it using the skeleton key. Unfortunately, the door remains locked, and a swinging door startles her. She later asks about the mysterious attic, but Mrs. Devereaux appears to be avoiding the said topic, stating that she has never been in the room. We can remember in the beginning that Mr. Devereaux suffered his stroke in the attic. During a stormy evening, a terrible sound awakens Caroline, and provokes her to search for it. She then double-checks Mr. Devereaux's bedroom, only to find out that no one is in bed, and that Mr. Devereaux is missing. She instantly searches, and tries to find Mr. Devereaux in any other areas. Eventually, she locates Mr. Devereaux crawling on the roof, and falls to the ground. She quickly calls the attention of Mrs. Devereaux by loudly banging her door, and she rushes downstairs to help the old stroke victim man. The terrifying night reveals an alarming message, when Caroline uncovers the bedsheet with a phrase, help me, and hides it in the cabinet. The next day, Luke shows up to update the will of Mrs. Devereaux. Caroline begins to speculate and shares what she discovered about the bedsheets with Luke. But surprisingly, the bedsheet is blank and has no written messages. Having these alarming signs from Mr. Devereaux, Caroline gradually doubts, and realizes that the paralyzed man needs help. She feels that something or someone hinders and silences the older man from conveying a message about danger. 
One morning, Caroline takes advantage of the moment when Mrs. Devereaux is sweeping at the backyard. Caroline rapidly goes back to the attic and tries to open the door again. When she picks the lock, she discovers a room filled with ritual instruments. She is intrigued with the artifacts, human organs, bell books, mirrors, and recordings, which she believes are magic components. Just a few moments later, Caroline gets nervous when Mrs. Devereaux is looking for her. She then drops and breaks a jar containing a human organ, and she immediately tries to hide. Luckily, Mrs. Devereaux does not catch her, and she escapes the attic together with the old recording she grabs. To deal with the puzzlement, Caroline revisits the room, and gets an old recording labeled as the Conjure of Sacrifice. She brings it with her apartment, and listens to it privately. What she hears is Papa Justify's voice uttering an incantation. Seemingly anxious, they talk about this matter and drink at the bar. Jill shares the concept of hoodoo as magic, which only works for those who believe. She also brings Caroline to the shop of her aunt, which is fronted as a laundry shop. The next day, Mrs. Devereaux gets furious and drops a flower vase, when she finds out that Caroline has hung a mirror in Mr. Devereaux's room, she scolds her and takes down all the mirrors. Caroline confronts Mrs. Devereaux about the attic. She threatens her that she will leave if she does not talk about it. A revelation arises when Caroline confronts Mrs. Devereaux directly, asking to explain nothing but the truth about the past. The said woman begins telling the story about the horrifying past. Ninety years ago, a cruel banker moved into the house with his family and two servants, named Justify and Cecile. One night, as the party ended, the wealthy guests looked for the two children of the banker to say goodbye, but they found them in the attic, doing a ritual together with Justify and Cecile. The said servants are experts in the hoodoo magic, and Justify even learned a spell known as the Conjure Sacrifice. Consequently, the guests dragged these two servants, and hung their bodies from a tree. The children witnessed how their wealthy visitors burned and set fire to servants' bodies. Afterward, the banker's business went bankrupt, when they bought their way out of being charged with any crime. However, the banker killed himself and his wife. In the present, one afternoon, while carrying the laundry, Caroline finds a container of brick dust in a shed. She then uses a small mirror and presents it to Mr. Devereaux's face while she is bathing him. Upon looking in the mirror, Mr. Devereaux trembles and exhibits a frightening reaction. She locks the bathroom door, and she apologizes to him for making him hurt and scared. As she observes the mysterious atmosphere and signs given by Mr. Devereaux, this leads Caroline to pretend about shopping outside. However, she will visit Jill's aunt, who has a hidden hoodoo shop. There, she finds Mama Cynthia, who sells spell books and potions. She asks her about the brick dust at the entrance of her door. She then determines that the essence of this is to detect the enemies, as they cannot cross through it. With these confusing and unanswered thoughts, she shares everything with Mama Cynthia, and salts for the next step to do as she tries to help Mr. Devereaux. She now concludes that behind the condition of Mr. Devereaux is a magic spell, preventing him from speaking and acting. Cynthia grants her requests, and provides her with all the magic equipment to reverse Mr. Devereaux's condition. Her friend Jill even wonders and questions why she is so attached to the said patient. Armed with perseverance, Caroline is eager to help the older man instead of abandoning him, this is because she does not want Mr. Devereaux to have the same treatment as the patients she had before at the hospitals. In addition, she is now emotionally involved in saving Mr. Devereaux, due to the guilt she felt for not tending to her father during his final month. With this, Caroline finds the right time, and grabs the chance to perform the ritual. While the magic spell is ongoing, the procedure unveils a hidden truth when Mr. Devereaux slowly utters her name. The paralyzed man repeats help me, and begs Caroline to get him out of the mansion. When Mrs. Devereaux feels that something is occurring, she wakes up and interrupts the scene. As Caroline asks Mr. Devereaux who he is trying to flee, he suddenly points to his wife. Mrs. Devereaux sends Caroline away, and Mr. Devereaux's state goes back to being muted. That night, Caroline wakes up from a nightmare involving Justify and Cecile, the two servants with herself being silenced, and she then distinguishes a reflection in the mirror. The next day, she starts packing her things, but she changes her mind after seeing Mr. Devereaux, and thinking about her father. She visits Luke at his office, and shares some pictures of the stuff she found in the attic. These experiences triggered her to know and search for the last hospice nurse. Later, Luke introduces her to Mr. Devereaux's last caretaker named Hallie, and this lady warns Caroline to leave the house as soon as possible. Furthermore, Caroline takes the lawyer to the gasoline station, where she sees magic items, and witnesses dust sprinkled in their doorway. She then remembers the moment when she attempts to show the bedsheet to Luke with a disappeared message. 
As we cannot forget, the dust serves as a weapon of protection, as the ghost cannot pass through it. As they follow the familiar sound of a playing record, they find a blind woman, who talks about Justify and his conjuring. Caroline learns that it is a spell wherein the people who cast this spell, will possess and steal the remaining years of life from its victim. Finally, she is now certain, and fears that Mrs. Devereaux will soon cast a spell on Mr. Devereaux. Meanwhile, Caroline tries to find her record when she arrives at the house, but she cannot locate it. She puts Mrs. Devereaux to the test, by inviting her to a room with dust layered in the doorway. As expected, the old lady is unable to enter, and it confirms her suspicions. She plans her next step, and tells Mr. Devereaux that they are leaving. Over dinner, Caroline executes her plan, by putting a sedative or sleeping drug to Mrs. Devereaux's tea. She also interrogates the old lady for her underlying intention to her husband's condition. But before she explains everything, the potion works, and makes Mrs. Devereaux slowly collapse from her seat. The old lady attempts to finish the conjuring spell, but loses her consciousness and passes out. With this, Caroline swiftly looks for the record of the spell, and sees strands of her hairs. She hurriedly takes Mr. Devereaux out of the mansion, and rushes him to her car. But the gates remain secured and locked, which hinders their way out. Attention begins again, when Mrs. Devereaux wakes up and searches for the two with a rifle. Since they are unable to leave the mansion, Caroline decides to hide Mr. Devereaux, and promises to return to him. The old lady hunts them and tries to shoot Caroline as she runs away in the swamps through a rowboat. Then, Caroline quickly consults and explains everything to Luke, the said lawyer receives a phone call from Mrs. Devereaux, who shares another side of the story. While she looks in a cabinet, she sees things similar in the attic, including the ring of Justify and the skeleton key. Unexpectedly, Luke emerges in front of her, who strangles and causes her to pass out. With cloth on her mouth and ties on her hands, this helpless Caroline regains her consciousness. Luke, a cohort of Mrs. Devereaux, drives and sends her back to the mansion. We can surmise that Mrs. Devereaux and Luke are planning to complete a spell. Hence, they force Caroline to tell where Mr. Devereaux is, but Caroline refuses to do so. But when Caroline suddenly recalls the dust in another room, she declares where Mr. Devereaux is. They engage in a struggle, kicking his face, which allows her to untie herself. She briskly starts layering dust in every corner around the house. Surprisingly, Mrs. Devereaux meets her on the second floor, who blows dust in her face. As they fight with each other, Caroline manages to defend herself, and accidentally pushes Mrs. Devereaux off the stairs. After the fight, Caroline grabs a telephone, and locks herself in a room. She calls the police and Jill for rescue, but unfortunately, the line is cut. Since she is unable to leave the house because of Luke, she flees to the attic, where a circle of candles and mirrors is waiting for her. She pulls out the conjure protection spell, and draws a double circle around her. She hastily recreates the symbol with a piece of chalk, cuts her hair, and drops blood from her palm. Abruptly, Mrs. Devereaux enters the room, and unfolds a shocking revelation. Mrs. Devereaux declares that she trapped Caroline to get inside the protective circle. She then unleashes a mirror at Caroline, reflecting the banker's daughter, Mrs. Devereaux, and Mama Cecile, which leads to an explosion. As they open their eyes, they realize that they switch bodies. The hidden intentions become vivid, when Caroline's soul and consciousness appear to be in Mrs. Devereaux's body. Also, Mrs. Devereaux's spirit goes to Caroline and will take the remaining years of her life. The possessed Caroline now feeds Mrs. Devereaux, now the real Caroline, a potion to make her paralyzed like Mr. Devereaux. Indeed, it is the previous two servants, Justify and Cecile, who perform hoodoo to extend their life, just like they secretly possessed and consumed the banker's two children in the past. The movie ends with Caroline, who is now trapped in Mrs. Devereaux's body, same as the real Luke in Mr. Devereaux's body. They are now both imprisoned in the wrong bodies with no capacity to speak. Jill goes to the mansion with the ambulance to rescue and take the paralyzed. With such desperation, Caroline in Mrs. Devereaux's body cannot help but stare, wishing to tell the horrible story. In the end, Cecile and Justify, the two servants, continue to live in the mansion, with their new young figures from Caroline and Luke through the skeleton key. This is Daniel CC Movie Channel. Stay safe and enjoy your day.